Well, it's these, this Sunday is the Feast of Christ the King. It's a, a feast that kind of culminates the liturgical year. Um, and we, uh, we next Sunday will be the first Sunday of a new liturgical year, the first Sunday of Advent. Look out, here it comes. <laughs> All right, now, uh, this Feast of Christ the King, um, I want to ask you and myself a question. You know, is Christ really your king? Is he my king? And um, this gospel today, sort of, the Lord kind of, he's on trial before Pilate, but he sort of turns the tables on Pilate. And uh, he, um, asks, he starts asking Pilate questions. <laughs> Very bold. <laughs> Something only that the Son of God could do. Now, uh, with that in mind, let's take a look. And we're pondering this question. Is Christ really our king? Now, the gospel opened, we're in the sort of the middle, or the very, the, sort of the early part of the trial. We don't have the whole trial in front of us. It, gets, it, it takes up the better part of uh, two chapters. Um, but um, so, so we're sort of dropped into it without a lot of introduction. Uh, Christ is before Pilate. And um, here, you know, we were simply there in the middle of the trial. And he says... Um, there's a portrait here, if you look at the whole trial, of indecision. Um, Pilate doesn't really want to decide one way or the other about Jesus. He, he has to. You know, will he please the crowds and hand him over, or will he listen to his own conscience? He, he knows Jesus to be innocent of the charges. They say he's a king. This is just silly. He, he doesn't have any kingship, you know, uh, notions, and he's not a threat to the Roman government. It's all trumped up charges, you see. So he knows that in his conscience. His own wife has come to him and said, look, you know, have nothing to do with this innocent man, you know. And um, in other words, don't, don't hand him over. So he's got all these voices. And then he's got the, the Jewish leaders outside, and they're demanding uh, that he put, him, put Jesus to death. And Pilate says, whoa, I mean, this is, what has he done? So he's a portrait of indecision, and there's also a kind of a brilliant thing that John does. He kind of paints a picture of indecision, because arguably six, maybe as many as seven times, Pilate goes in and out, in and out. He goes in to talk to Jesus, out to talk to the Jewish leaders, back in to talk to Jesus, back out, back in, back out. And um, he, um, that's a picture of vacillation and of indecision. And uh, so this is how the the first thing we see that in asking this question, is Jesus really my king? You know, Pilate kind of, you know, represents a lot of us in the sense that indecision, you know, in a way we, we, we love uh, not just indecision so much, but we love when things are vague. Well, who's to say there's lots of opinions out there? Uh, so I guess I don't have to make a decision about this one way or the other. I'll just kind of keep my powder dry. And so we love, we love that, you know. Who's to say? I don't have to really commit myself because there's different opinions out there. All right. So you see, this is where mm, this question opens up in a, in a, in a moment of indecision. Hmm? And uh, for all of us, there's this kind of, yeah, I, I sort of love the Lord, but well, I tell you, <clears throat> being really committed to him and really answering this question clearly, there's a lot of implication to that. Now for Pilate, he's thinking, man, I got a career. Ah. Uh, you know, if I let, if I don't get this guy off to death, the crowd will riot, and I'll, I'll be demoted and probably kicked out. And I'm looking to rise up in the ranks. And you know, so I, he's got all that on his mind. And yet, there's also this this voice of his conscience, and the the Lord stands before him. All right. Now, at a critical moment in the trial, we move from indecision, if you will, to there's a kind of an inquiry that takes place, and so. Pilate begins the inquiry, you know, he says, are you the king of the Jews? And um, <clears throat> although Jesus is on trial, as I say, he kind of turns the tables on Pilate. He says, well, are you saying this on your own, or is it, is it just that others have been talking to you about me? <laughs> so that's what, what and, and of course, Pilate reacts with like, what, what, who, why did you talk like this? I didn't. Your own people handed you over it. And I said, no, but in a way, Jesus just stands before him and says, I guess that's what you've got to decide. Am I the king of the Jews? Am I a king? Am I someone that you either have to fear or that you have to love and give loyalty to? Who am I? Who do you think I am? Hmm? You know, 
Isn't that the fundamental question that the Lord asked the apostles one day? Who do the crowd say, but who do you say that I am? And we have to answer that question, and then we have to own the decision. We don't. We like to vacillate like Pilate. We like to be indecisive. We like to kind of have it both ways, you see. But in the end of the day, there are just a lot of things that are binary. You know, you're either for Jesus and love him or you're, you're, you're against him, you know. And uh, whoever does not gather with me scatters. So we see this inquiry, very important moment in Pilate's life and in our life, my life, your life, you know, um, are you, are you saying I'm a king? Are you saying this on your own? Or are you just repeating formulas that other people have said? You know, hallelujah, you know, hail to the king, you know. Um, you know, the, these songs that we sing, you know, hail redeemer, king divine. We sing and we say these things, but sometimes we're just repeating what other people have said. Is he really my king? Well, let's find out a little bit more about what that's about. So we move to the next stage of this gospel where... Um, uh, Pilate, you know, asked this question, uh, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus turns the tables and says, well, am I a king? You decide. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, are you saying this on your own or have others just been telling you? Now we come to the indication that Christ is our king. Oh, Jesus, uh, you know, after Pilate's sort of little mini tirade, he, um, he, Jesus, in a way, he, he, again, he, he then says, well, look, he says, this is why I've come into the world. I've come to testify to the truth. And everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. So you see, there's an indication, an indication whether Christ is our king. And that is that we listen to his teaching, we listen to his truth, and we heed it, you know, and we listen to his voice. So again, I have come to testify to the truth. And everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. So this then is the fundamental parameter, or the, these are the parameters for whether or not Christ really is our king. You know, Is he just someone we pay lip service to? Uh, maybe Christmas and Easter? Is he, is he someone that we listen to and devoutly, devoutly try to live his teachings? And when we fail, as we all do, we go to confession, we admit our fault, but we don't go calling good or no big deal what God calls sin. Okay? You know, the, the, the worst thing in our world today isn't that people sin. That's always been the case. I mean, I don't make light of that, but I'm just saying that the worst thing is just defiance today. And I will not be told what to do, what to think, what to say, what to be, what to do. I will not be told these things. And the God I know wouldn't be upset about it. And so there's a kind of, almost an idolatry, a making up of a new God, a refusal to listen to what he's clearly said in the scriptures about many of these moral issues and so on, and, and, and uh, just this sort of defiance. And this is um, serious, it's very serious. And, you know, I've, I've certainly been defiant in my life, and uh, thank be to God, so somebody, somebody kind of got to me, um, I pray I'm not you know, utterly defiant in anything at all. I think sometimes I can be stubborn, like a lot of us, you know, stubborn and slow to change. But, um, you know, we've we got to really pray about this. You know, a lot of people running around saying Jesus is fine. Um, but if he were alive today, he wouldn't say what he obviously did say back here. He'd say something that agrees with me today, you know. And that's kind of switching the seats, you know. We're not listening to the truth. We're declaring it on our own and making sure that we're, we're, we're saying that Jesus agrees with us. Well, that's not what he says here. He says, I came to testify to the truth, and anyone uh, or everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice, my voice. And Jesus speaks certainly in the Gospels, but he also speaks in the epistles of the New Testament because Jesus said to those apostles, who hears you is hears me, who listens to you is listening to me. And we either believe that or the whole, the whole thing's off. Um, so again, I, I, I would simply say to you, as I say to myself, we've got to understand that if I'm going to say he's my king, that means I'm going to obey. I'm going to listen. I'm going to try to obey at all times. And if I fail, I'll call it what it is. It's a sin. And uh, not go on just, you know, making excuses and so on. So that's the, we've seen, first of all, there are, there is a kind of an indecisiveness that plagues Pilate. So also a lot of us. 
there is an inquiry. Are you a king? What's going on here? And Jesus says, that's a question you've got to answer. Am I a king? Am I your king? And here's the indication that I'm really your king. So the indication is that we listen to his voice because we belong to the truth. <clears throat> now, finally, there comes an implication. If you look at the whole trial, it, it, we don't have it in today's gospel for this for this mass, but um, we um, we have the um, uh, you know in the, if you read further on, there comes a moment finally. You know, Pilate's tried to do everything to like get Jesus off. Um, the crowds are still yelling, "Crucify him!" Um, he has Jesus scourged, uh, and that that's an injustice because if Jesus has done nothing wrong or is not is, is not guilty of the charges against him, why scourge him? So, and and now we see that finally Pilate said, "Well, I I I, I got to go with my career. If I, if I don't give this guy over, the mob this mob rule." And if I don't give Jesus over to the mob, they're all going to just riot. And I'll lose my job. And I'm out. I might even get executed. That can't happen. So he goes out and says, it, it says here, Pilate, saw, this is from John 19, it's some verses on from where we were today. Pilate sought to release Jesus. But the Jews cried out, if, this, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself up against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he then brought, you know, he was very much afraid, and he brought Jesus out, and he sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, what's interesting, there's, a, there's a, an ambiguity in the text that I, I'm sure John intends. Uh, in this Gospel of John, John intends it, um, it's an ambiguity. It's as he, you know, Pilate heard these words. He brought Jesus out and, you know, put the judgment, the judgment seat, up, and he sat down on the judgment seat. Who did? Well, I mean, historically, surely Pilate. But don't you see really here that it's Christ who's sitting there on that judgment seat? Am I your king? Do you uh, want to hear me and heed my voice? Do you listen to the truth? Do you belong to the truth? Do you listen to my voice because you belong to the truth? For I came to testify to the truth. Do you want the kingdom, my kingdom, which is the kingdom of truth and justice and mercy and love? Do you want that kingdom or not? So although Pilate brings out the judgment seat and has it put down, uh, and he sat down, the, <laughs> who, Jesus or him? You know, again, well, of course, Pilate, yeah, that, you're just thinking of history. You're not. You're not seeing the, the the deeper level that the real judgment seat, the ultimate judgment seat, belongs to Christ. The Father judges no man, says Jesus. He handed all judgment over to the Son, that the world may fear him, or revere, however you want to translate it. You know. So again, today we say we sing about Christ the King, but kings have authority in our life. The word Lord also indicates authority. Authority. And do we live that way? Do we uh, really strive to listen to what Jesus is saying? And if we fall short, do we call it what it is, a sin? Um, are we trying to live more fully what he teaches? So these are just some questions for Christ the King. Again, is he really your king? Is he really my king? It's a wonderful thing today to sing all these songs, and I enjoy it. <laughs> and we should. But I think sometimes we sing songs in hope as much as in reality. <laughs> you know, um, you know, crown him with many crowns. You know, okay, the lamb upon the throne. And that's, that's you know, that's great. <laughs> but when I walk out the church door, will I be doing that? You know, so I mean, that's why I say we sing some of these things in hope. Hopefully, we're all making progress. It's not that we're perfect. Um, but don't be defiant. Don't do that. If you're struggling to live a teaching or understand it, stay with the Lord. Work through it. But don't just, don't be defiant. And this is so common in our culture today. People just blow it off and they say, you know, the God I know would never talk like that. Well, the God you know can't save you. It's the real God, the real Lord. He's the only one who can save you. And he's the only one who can really be your king and mine. 
And uh, if we belong to the truth, we listen to his voice. Amen.